Outbreaks of infectious diseases have always taken place. The plague in the Middle Ages, cholera in the 19th century, and the influenza epidemics in the 20th century. We can't stop outbreaks happening, but we can better prepare to reduce their impact. Large-scale disease outbreaks such as diphtheria in the Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh and recurrent epidemics such as cholera and Lassa fever highlight the need for robust local and, if necessary, international preparedness and rapid responses to save lives. When an outbreak is undetected and a response is not triggered rapidly and effectively, the human cost can be high, as we saw in West Africa with Ebola. A preparedness plan enables individuals, communities, emergency response organizations and governments to better anticipate and respond to outbreaks. They need to be in place at community, sector cluster, national, regional and international levels. Linked to the country's overall preparedness plan at community level, a preparedness plan informs people how to respond to protect themselves, their family, and their neighbors. Sector or cluster level plans define how actors work together to achieve sector-specific outbreak prevention and response actions. In the water, sanitation, and hygiene cluster, for example, different organizations may take responsibility for flash chlorination of wells. While the nutrition cluster might plan to maintain a supply of food supplements for vulnerable groups. Country-level preparedness aims to catalyze and coordinate outbreak prevention and response efforts. Forming a country plan across sectors including case management, nutrition, wash, communications and logistics ensures coordination and reduces duplication during an active outbreak. Globally, there are institutions and organizations involved in preparedness. Through global working groups and networks, these organizations develop tools such as standardized guidelines, special clinical treatment, and logistic kits. So, what triggers an outbreak alert and response? A country's health authorities set disease-specific thresholds based on international guidance, which trigger an outbreak alert. Alerts are set depending on what's normal for that location and the risk of transmission. In Nola's town, there is an outbreak of cholera. When Nola arrived at the cholera treatment unit with her two-year-old son Jarno, he was showing all the signs of severe dehydration. Thanks to the fast response and care he received, he improved within hours and after three days he was fully recovered. Cholera treatment centers were set up in line with a preparedness plan where patients were isolated and treated according to guidelines. Oral rehydration points were installed within 48 hours of the outbreak being declared. Wash partners activated plans to improve the provision of safe water. These plans included encouraging and enabling people to chlorinate their own water, activating NGO plans to rehabilitate latrines in schools and health facilities, and triggering 400 pre-trained community hygiene promoters to boost the message that hand washing can prevent the spread of cholera. Health promotion plans were activated with partners broadcasting radio messages, enabling communities to recognize and respond to the signs and symptoms of cholera. At the request of the Ministry of Health, the World Health Organization provided emergency medical supplies, rapid diagnostic test kits, and technical support to NGOs to implement correct case management. Pre-positioning medical and diagnostic supplies to all states, setting up an effective surveillance system and training health workers enabled early detection and treatment of people infected with cholera. Timely triggering of an outbreak alert and response helped save Jarna's life. In his community and country, outbreak preparedness led to more lives saved, reduced suffering, 
efficient use of scarce resources, and increased value for money. Responding to outbreaks tomorrow is about preparing today.